It's the president's vanity project. His multi-billion dollar vanity project called a wall is nothing more than a distraction from the fact that he actually hasn't focused on working people in America. He contrived a national crisis around his big distraction. A few years later. Stay off the concrete, back over here. Off the concrete, back over here, please. Stay off the concrete over there, back over here. no love for me or Republicans for Kamala Harris today. In fact, I think the Trump campaign line today ought to be arsonist returns to scene of crime. I mean, look at the last three and a half years. We've got the border has effectively been open. People flowing across ice. Ice today released information that there are 13,000 non-citizens convicted of homicide and almost 16,000 non-citizens convicted of some kind of sexual crime who are in the country right now. Only because we're in the shadow of an election is Kamala Harris trying to rush and pay some lip service to this issue as a tactical matter. Anderson, I don't think Harris should be trying to elevate this issue because this is the best ground from which Donald Trump has to fight. So, no, I think the Harris campaign is making a tactical mistake, and I think they have very little to say that the American people are going to buy on this. Today. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. We got to talk about Kamala Harris visiting the border, something that we know is an act of desperation from her campaign because she had to be begged to visit the border when she was first appointed as border czar. I mean, she was making all kinds of excuses for not going to the border, talking about she hasn't been to Europe either, right? And it's almost like, okay, well, you just don't think that it's important to visit the border and to see the disaster that is happening because of the Biden administrations, aka her policies as well, too, because she was the border czar. But she did visit the border today. She's already being roasted for her visit to the border because it's just a big photo op, right? Democrats believe that the American people are stupid and they want the American people to believe that Kamala Harris visiting the border is a sign that she's actually serious when it comes to solving this issue and we know that she's not serious because she was the border czar or she is the border czar let's, let's not get it twisted she's still in charge of the border she's still in power right now and she's basically claiming that she's gonna do a whole bunch of things that she didn't do while also at the same time blaming trump for what's happening at the border that is essentially the gist of the speech that she gave uh, after visiting the border is the same old same old nothing different just Kamala Harris pretending like she's going to solve this issue while at the same time again blaming Trump take a look so I've just come from visiting the border and the port of entry in Douglas I spoke with dedicated agents from Border Patrol and Customs officers who every day see the overflow of commercial traffic through the port these men and women who work there and at other places along our southern border help keep our nation secure. And they need more resources to do their jobs, which is why we have and are in the process of investing half a billion dollars to modernize and expand the port of entry here in Douglas. And why, last December, I helped raise the rate of overtime pay for border agents, and also why I strongly supported the comprehensive border security bill. Written last year, written last year, as you know, by a bipartisan group of senators, including one of the most conservative members of the United States Congress, that bill would have hired 1,500 more border agents and officers. It would have paid for 100 inspection machines to detect fentanyl that is killing tens of thousands of Americans every year. It would have allowed us to more quickly and effectively remove those who come here illegally, and it would have increased the number of immigration judges and asylum officers. It was the strongest border security bill we have seen in decades. It was endorsed by the Border Patrol Union. And it should be in effect today, producing results in real time right now for our country. <laughs> the 
But Donald Trump tanked it. He picked up the phone and called some friends in Congress and said, stop the bill. Because, you see, he prefers to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And the American people deserve a president who cares more about border security than playing political games and their personal political future. Yeah, except that's exactly what Kamala Harris is doing right now, and everybody knows it, right? This is why, honestly, this trip to the border could backfire because you can sit here and talk about what shoulda, coulda, woulda happened when it comes to that border bill that wasn't going to secure the border. But at the end of the day, um, when Biden got into office on the first day, he repealed 90 plus executive orders from President Trump related to securing the border, signaling that, hey, it's okay for all the illegals to come into the country. In fact, Kamala and Joe Biden were telling the illegals before the election, during the primaries, <laughs> they were trying to outwoke each other. Hey, come right on in, right? We welcome everybody, okay? This is what they were doing. And then as soon as Biden got into office, he enacted policies to... Uh, make the border less secure, okay? That is something that Kamala Harris supported. And as borders are, she failed to do her job in solving the root causes along with, again, doing a piss poor job when it comes to managing the border and the crisis in general, right? And I really wish that she would do an actual interview because in response to her blaming Trump, the natural follow-up is, okay, well, why is it that Biden hasn't put back into place all the executive orders that Trump had in place in order to help fix and protect the border, right? That, that is the natural follow-up. If you're blaming Trump, why is it that Biden's not doing everything that he can do in order to secure the border, okay? Do you support those executive orders, okay? What exactly do you support outside of the bipartisan? What I mean by bipartisan is one or two dummies, right, from, uh, from the Republican Party got on board with the Democrats and their plan to normalize illegal immigration and to grant amnesty to illegals, okay? Uh, yeah, um, outside of that, um, what else could you have done, right? What else could you have done to fix the problem, right? Because there is a difference. There's a stark difference between the millions and millions and millions, 10 million plus illegals, really, that have been led into the country. These are the ones that we know, right? Uh, versus uh, the amount of illegals that came into the country under Trump. The difference is night and day, okay? I really wish somebody would just ask her one time, if this is what you support, if you support a secure border, why is it that you roll back Trump's policies, okay? Do you support Biden doing that, right? Those would be great questions. Also, the question of what are we going to do about the illegals that are already here? Because we have too many of them here, okay? We need mass deportations, okay? If we're not talking about mass deportations, uh, you're not really talking about solving a problem because a part of the problem is the fact that they're already here. And some of them that are here, have criminal records and are considered to be very dangerous, according to uh, some of the new numbers that were released by the Border Patrol today, the day of Kamala's big girl trip, okay, to the border, uh, which again makes her look less serious about what she's saying when you have devastating numbers like this coming out that are a product of the policies of Biden and Kamala Harris. Take a look. Yeah, and Sandra, bear with me. We just got these numbers moments ago, but uh, it, it's a jaw dropper to say the least. So to set the stage here, let me just explain what these numbers mean. ICE has something called a non-detained docket. Essentially what that is, is it means migrants who were encountered by DHS but are no longer in federal custody. So who's on this non-detained docket? It's illegal immigrants who were caught and released at the border, released with the court date years away. They're in immigration proceedings combined with illegal immigrants who have already been ordered, deported from the country by a judge, but are still here roaming the country. So keep that in mind, this non-detained docket. Uh, according to a letter that the acting director of ICE just sent to Texas Congressman Tony Gonzalez, uh, on ICE's non-detained docket, they're currently tracking 425,000 uh, non-citizens who have been convicted of a crime. Of that number, over 13,000 non-citizens have convictions for homicide and are on the non-detained docket, meaning they're roaming the country right now. On top of that, there are another 15,811 non-citizens convicted of sexual assault who are roaming the country right now on ICE's non-detained docket. It doesn't stop there. Those are convictions. 
The ICE director also says there are currently just under 1,900 non-citizens on the non-detained docket who have pending homicide charges who are roaming the country, and another 4,250 non-citizens who have pending sexual assault charges who are roaming the country on the non-detained docket. So people's eyes might be glazing over right now with all the numbers we just threw at you. Just to put it in a nutshell right here, what we've learned from the acting ICE director via this letter to Congressman Tony Gonzalez is right now there are over 13,000 illegal aliens convicted of homicide who are roaming the United States right now. There are another 15,811 illegal aliens roaming the country right now who have been convicted of sexual assault. And there are even more who are facing charges for homicide and charges for sexual assault. So this just goes to show, guys, the non-detained docket has exploded under the Biden administration to over, I believe it's 7.3 million. They're anticipating it could hit 8 million by the end of the year. Yeah, so that is devastating and very scary when you think about it. Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, under their leadership, they have laid in tens of thousands of murderers, okay, of assaulters, of abusers. This is not an exaggeration. This is documented, okay? And this is what they know, right? This is, these are just the ones that they know, okay? But yet, you're supposed to trust her. You're supposed to trust her to solve and to fix a problem that they created, really. I mean, let's keep it 100. They made the problem worse. Yes, we've always had to deal with the border. It's always been kind of a thing, Right. But it was not this much of a thing until Biden and Harris. OK. And Kamala Harris is trying to convince you that she can fix it, that she has a solution. She doesn't have anything. Right. You would be a fool to trust Kamala Harris. OK. Which is what the Kamala Harris team is trying to do. Right. They're trying to get people to trust her on this issue. And I personally just don't think it's going to work, to be honest with you. Uh, her poll numbers when it comes to uh, immigration are pretty bad. OK. And Democrats currently are coping right now. Uh, over Kamala Harris losing in the polls when it comes to this issue. And now they're trying to make all types of silly arguments for why her visiting the border is going to help her. And it shows that she's serious about the issue. Apparently Trump is not serious about the issue according to Kamala and her propagandists. And it's just all over the place, man. So much so that I don't even think CNN is buying into these weak arguments from Kamala Harris and her propagandists. So without further ado, Let's check out this clip. Also really spotlighting the point, hopefully she does this later today, spotlighting the point that Donald Trump is the problem. There was a bill. <laughs> Democrats and Republicans came together on a bill, which hardly okay. ever happens in Washington. He stood in the way of it. I would so, also add, though, if you don't mind, Aaron, that he's been a total disaster on the border. I mean, the wall that he said is, it, he built is not even erected. <laughs> Mexico, I still haven't seen any receipts for them paying for it. So right. I think she's also going to lean into the, the point that he has no credibility on the issue of the border wow he has no credibility on the issue of the border <laughs> hey no credibility he's been a total disaster on the border so if trump has been a total disaster on the border then how do you define uh what kamala harris and joe biden have done <laughs> right because if you look at the numbers again they're night and day um democrats apparently think success with the border is allowing more illegal immigrants into the country right this is what they define as success okay and less illegals coming into the country Apparently, that's a disaster, according to the Democrats. They're just not living in reality at this point. And I hope they continue to gaslight, right? I hope they continue to say things like this because it's only going to make it worse, right? I mean, Kamala honestly would be better off just admitting that, hey, I messed up, right? And I've learned from my mistakes. And this is why you should trust me moving forward is because I know what the issues are. I know the mistakes that we made. I know I was, was naive back in 2019, 2020. I was wrong, okay? She's just better off going that route. But this is something that politicians never do, right? They never admit that they're wrong. And I think what would help out Kamala Harris the most is to just tell the truth and just be honest about the issue. But she can't do that, right? And uh, I I'm just hoping that they continue to gaslight like this because this is one of the main reasons why people don't trust them on the economy. The gaslighting, right? Saying things that are the opposite of reality, which is basically what this woman is saying right now. Right. I mean, well, some of the wall was erected. Part of it used in a Harris ad, uh, as K-File had found. Boom. Um, <laughs> David, let me ask you, though, about the point. Yo, when CNN, when they're getting in zingers, right, after Democrats and their propagandists talk, you know they're losing on this issue. Right? You know this is a bad issue for Kamala Harris when uh, CNN is trying to get in zingers. 
point that Ashley just made about how she doesn't need to win on the issue. She needs to just close the margin on some people. And we've seen that in the polling. A- Ashley has a point. In Arizona, where Harris is tonight, Trump uh, against Trump, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, against Biden, Trump was up 20 points on immigration. Against Harris, he's up by 15. In an election this close, you know, all you got to do is you don't have to win it. You just got to narrow that gap. And it, it appears that she is doing that. Yeah, I, I, I don't listen. I'm not going to live or die over polls, a, a snapshot poll. So the trend has been terrible on immigration and who do you trust on the border for the current vice president? Listen, you know when the last time she was at the border was, Aaron? Nobody can remember. It was over three years ago. If she right. really cared about the border, but what she'd have trend? Made a trip, I mean, she's she's doing uh, before, a little better in the but, polling, but, but, is what I just pointed out. Aaron and and NBC, the latest NBC poll has her, which is about a week old has her down 21 points to Trump on the border and immigration. Uh, her going to the border just reminds people that she, in her run for president in 2020, wanted, you know, took a position on having immigrants who cross the border illegally not prosecuted legally. She said, I want to decriminalize that. I want to you know, lessen the uh, money for uh, border agents in the CBP. So when she's going there and saying, you know, I want to get tougher, just get on the plane and go back to Washington Go into your office in the OEOB where you're the current vice president and get tougher today. She doesn't need to wait for until January 20th. She's in the job, as you pointed out. It's hard. It's hard to run against the administration that you're a part of. And that's what she's trying to do. And at 40 days out, voters aren't buying it. Facts. Facts. All she has to do is go to Biden and say, hey, listen, put these executive orders back in place. That's all she got to do. Let's keep it 100. If she can't convince Biden to do that, right? to actually do all the things that Trump did, then, hey, she's not cut out to be president, in my opinion. But this idea that it's Trump's fault because the Democrats tried to pass some last-minute bill that, that wouldn't secure the border after all these illegal criminals have come into the country, the damage was already done. And Kamala Harris comes and says, hey, well, we tried to fix it right after the damage was done. Therefore, it's Trump's fault. That's just not a winning argument. It's not. It's not. And let's be real. Her numbers aren't really improving when it comes to immigration. When you're down 15 points on an issue, that's bad, right? You're losing real bad, okay? The difference between 20 points and 15 points uh, is not really all that much when a vast majority of American people do not trust you on the issue. Mm-hmm. I said, I, I mean, what he's pointing no, out is a true is, point, though. Is that I, she actually, oh. but go ahead, Estad, then Ashley, jump in. I was just saying that what he's pointing out is, a, is, a, is sure. a true transition for Democrats, where they were four years ago on this is not where the party is now. There, and to my point, there's been a concession of the importance of the issue. And what Harris is trying to do is, is, is again, to, to slow down that margin. But I would say that they had not created a vision of what an immigration system would look like. And Harris hasn't done so even again now. And so I don't think it's I don't think they're trying to really get it to a 50 50 place. Even if we take a thing like Arizona, there's an abortion referendum on the ballot in November, too. Some of what Democrats are going to do is trying to defend on this issue, but some of what they're going to try to do is deflect and make sure other issues become more of a priority for voters. Ashley. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that I agree with any of that, but I appreciate the effort. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I wanted to get back to the point that was made earlier is, is she, she actually has gotten tougher. The administration has gotten tougher from where they were when they came into the administration. The first proposal that they offered to Congress was uh, a comprehensive uh, proposal on immigration. Since then, they've gotten tough. The Republicans walked away from the bill. They implemented uh, increased uh, security at the border. Border crossings are down 40 percent. They're lower than they were under Donald Trump. So there is signs that she went back into the White House and got tougher on the (laughs) issue. And it's actually working. Yeah. Yeah. David. Aaron, I just like real quickly, I, I just add with this. This administration created this crisis. If they would have just left the Trump Im- the border policies in place, which were working, immigration was, was down, right? Illegal immigration was down. We wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't have 10 million illegal immigrants in this 7. United 5. States. You know, I'm a, my, the, 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 the chyron on my little box up here says Nantucket. On the island, the small island in Nantucket, 15,000 year round residents, four gotaways, ICE came over and got four gotaways who committed violent sexual assaults, two child rapes, two sexual assaults on other residents here in the immigrant community. Your point is well taken, Aaron. It is affecting communities all across the nation, not just border communities, not just big cities, small cities all across America. And it's a, it's a crisis that was created by this administration. Right. So we just left it go. The Trump right. administration did a good job. 
All right, well, thank you all very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Fact. Now, the main reason that border crossings have come down is because the Biden administration has basically forced Mexico to do the job that the Border Patrol was supposed to be doing, right? I mean, that's what's happening, okay? So basically, Mexico has stepped up their enforcement of not letting the illegals just freely travel through Mexico to the U.S. border. That's a deal that Biden had worked out with the Mexican president uh, before the election in order to try to sway the outcome, right? Which, again, is something that they should have did a long time ago, which tells you just how bad it is, right? The fact is that they decided to do something before the election because they want to win, right? But the fact is that they allowed this problem to become the worst that has ever been over the past three or four years. Why? Because that's what they wanted. They wanted more illegals coming into the country and they did it on purpose. When they had the power to stop it, they, they didn't stop it, right? Until they needed to do so in order to win the election. And it still hasn't completely stopped. The illegals are still trying to come into the country. Mexico is just doing a better job at stopping them. So it's slowing up the pace of the illegals that are coming to the border, right? That are arriving at the border, okay? So they're still coming in mass, trying to get here. The problem is, again, that Mexico is actually stopping them, right? So that's why you have less border crossings, but it's still not better than it was under Trump, right? So when Democrats come out here and lie, talking about, oh, well, the numbers right now are better than they were under Trump. No, that's a lie, right? That is an absolute lie. Um, again, it reminds me of what the Democrats did out in California, right? In San Francisco, y'all remember when the Chinese came to town? And all of a sudden, they cleaned up the city after the city had basically been a shithole for years. All of a sudden, they figured out how to clean it up just because the Chinese came to town. That's what's happening here, right? That's exactly what's happening here. And if Kamala Harris is elected, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, uh, things will go back to business as usual. What's happening right now is only temporary. These people want the illegals to come into the country in mass. What was done under Biden Harris administration was done on purpose because that is Kamala Harris's ideology. She wants to allow more illegals into the country. And if she wins, it will go back to business as usual. This is only temporary. I'm telling you, this is a trick they're trying to pull and you will be an absolute fool to fall for this okie doke from the Democrats and Kamala Harris. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.